Time for another Facebook Live from the Beadsmith. Just giving people a chance to join us. It's me, Leslie Rogowski, with the Insignia Earrings. Voila! Just finishing getting everything set up here. Trying to get my my video showing so I can watch it at the same time that I teach you guys. All right, here we are. So hi everybody. Again, it's me, Leslie Rogalski. Gonna show you how to do the insignia earrings today. These are super fun, super easy, and very lightweight to wear, I might add. So our materials today are going to feature full-size gem duos. I'm using here the uh, Silver Splash Chalk. So it's white with this really cool, just organic silver on it. The new mini gem duos. You can see the size here the size difference and how they fit so nicely together in the pieces. Kites, also silver splash. Then I have size eight seed beads and size 15 seed beads. Plus you'll need a pair of closed jump rings and a pair of ear wires, fire line and a size 12 needle Actually, maybe a couple of them, uh, so you don't have to keep rethreading your needle when you need to weave your ends in. Because um, the size 12 fits through the 15s really nicely. So let's get started. Um, just a little bit before I take away my samples. This is the one we're going to make today. My partner in crime, Leslie Pope, did this really cool version with the laser etched tattoos in purple and green. This is the one from the cover photo. On the tutorial, that's got opaque black, gold and silver. This one is cool because I used the symbol bead substitute kites in this. So bringing more metal into it really gives it a lot of extra richness. And then my red and black one, I used duets. So when you play with duets, these are the full-size gem duos that I use the duets, and I wanted to make sure that I had the colors facing the right way. So you can see the whites face in, and it just gives this really dynamic structure. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna leave my one finished one in the colors I'm gonna be working on for you guys. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is um, thread your needle on a yard of fire line. Let me bring this in. I have these already strung. And you're going to string your kites, a kite, and a mini gem duo four times. And pay attention to whether you're threading through the tip end. You can see also Gem duos have a flat side and a faceted side, and the faceted side is what faces up. So here we go. Whoops. I know they're so little, I'm going to use one of these. The gem duos have a flat side on the bottom. This is face up. This is with the flat side facing up. So you can really see the difference when you look at the beads and you want to make sure when you're stringing it that you string it so that the faceted side with the ridge is facing up. So put that back down. Okay, so you're going to string through the tip of the point and a mini gem duo and the illustrations will show you how they're sitting and you're going to sew them into a ring by knotting them together and you don't want to pull too tight because they start to scrunch up like this. So you're going to leave a little ease to make sure that that stays flat. 
and I'm going to finish my knot. Now, the tutorial tells you to sew through every thread path two times. I'm not going to do that for this just for time sake and expediency, but by sewing through your pieces a second time, you're going to firm up the piece and it'll keep it from being too floppy when you're making it and when you're wearing it. So I'm going to pull my knot in and eat, give that some ease. Now you would normally you would thread this tail thread on another needle and weave it in. But again, just for our time's sake, I'm just going to snip it so that it's a little out of the way. So my thread is coming out from between a kite and a mini gem duo. And you want to make sure that you're going to sew away from the knot. Here's the tutorial. You're going to sew away from the knot. This It's going this way. And you're going to sew through a kite tip reverse direction and go through the wide end. That's the step up for this project. So now we're going to be able to work around and start to build this as the next step. So I'm sewing through away from the knot. I'm actually going clockwise here. And I'm going to come out through the wide end of my kite. So my piece looks just like my illustration. Now I'm going to add, I'm going to pick up a 15. Move these over so it's any closer. 15 and a regular gem duo. And sew through the mini gem duo. Now I'm going to do it in reverse. I'm going to pick through, pick up a full size gem duo and a 15. So I'm reflecting what I just did and I'm going to sew through the wide end of the next kite. So what makes this project really so easy is it, it is around and around and around. Now we're going to pick up a 15 and a mini gem duo. Put that down, 15. You know, I'm doing this at a distance, so I'm not holding it up to my face. And there's the mini gem duo. I'm gonna pick it up and sew through the next gem duo, the mini gem duo that's there. And I'm going to do the same thing that I just did with the full size. I'm going to reflect what I just did and pick up a mini gem duo and then a 15. And by the way, I have already pre-checked the holes of the beads that I'm using. When you work with two hole beads, you have to make sure before you use them that both holes are open. Because otherwise, imagine getting all the way through most of this and finding that a bead you've already sewn in is not going to fit. Wah, wah, wah. Okay. So I have my mini and my 15, and I'm going to sew through the wide end of the next kite working around. I want to say hi to everybody who's watching. It's a little hard for me to see the chats while I'm doing this. But I'm sure that Leslie Pope is making you feel welcome. Okay, I'm going to repeat this again. You're going to have the full-size gem duos and the mini gem duos with the 15s all the way around. Till you have this. I'll cut my little tail off on that. Yes, I had another one ready to go. Now we're gonna to start to add the 15s. So I am coming all the way around to where I first started and I'm exiting that first 15 that I picked up when I came out of the kite from the initial round. I strung four more 15s and working around, I'm going through the tip end, the outer tip open hole of the first full size gem duo. We add another gem duo 
full sized. Make sure I'm picking it up so that it's face up and I'm sewing through the next gem duo, full size gem duo. They just fit so nice, it's so satisfying, like having that jigsaw puzzle piece. Okay, now again, I'm gonna reflect because this is just a totally symmetrical piece. I'm gonna pick up my 415s to put on the other side and I'm gonna sew all the way through to come out this 15. So I'm gonna pick up my 415s and I happen to be using a galvanized Duracoat seafoam green, this really nice metallic. I've just turned my piece around so I can get through that 15. Let's see if we can get that there. You can see, and I'm gonna go through the kite and the 15 all together. There we go. So there's the piece. Now we're gonna do the side motif by picking up two 15s, sewing through the mini gem duo, picking up an eight, and then adding two 15s and coming around to repeat. So let's do that. Picking up two 15s. And one of the things when you are a designer of beadwork it takes a while to figure out things like the fact that I needed to use 15s and not 11s here, that round beads worked better than Delic is, and also how many work in order to keep the piece laying flat when you construct it. So I have my two 15s sewing into the mini gem duo. It makes a nice outline. Picking up an eight. Same thing, it took me a little experimentation till I figured out what I wanted to put in between the two mini gem duos. And now I'm coming out the other side, I'm gonna pick up two 15s and sew through the 15, the kite, and the 15 to come out the bottom to repeat the motif. And we're gonna do that all the way around. until you're at the very top again, and you're gonna sew through those first 15s that you put on. So here's the piece I just took away where I did these and worked around and came around here. And then worked all the way around, very symmetrical to come out the top. Believe it or not, when you reach this point, you're going to take the thread and weave it in and trim it because I don't wanna to have to see thread showing on the outside. We're almost done, you guys. The next part of it is just attaching the little V-shaped connection at the top for the ear wire. Pretty easy, right? Okay, so to, to weave it in is really very easy and usually I just tell you, but I'm gonna show you right now. The first thing I do is actually make a little tiny knot between this last 15 and the gem duo. And I just slide my needle and thread underneath here like this. So I have this loop of thread. I'm gonna bring my needle through it and pull it down. Just like that, it just gives a little more security and I'm gonna sew through all my beads to weave, when they talk about weaving your thread in to secure, I'm just gonna weave it back into the beadwork following existing thread paths. So I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna bring it down into the little 15s are really nice to hold your thread. They have a lot of tension in there. Just a little bit and I'm gonna bring my thread zap in carefully and just Goodbye. Now that's all taken care of. Of course, I didn't trim my tail thread on this one, so I'll do that. Now I have my base earring and it's time with to thread like about a foot of thread, 12 inches or so on a needle. And we're going to add this part here. Now you can add a stopper bead if you feel like you're gonna keep yanking it out before you finish this. 
So a stopper bead just keeps your thread from pulling out while you're working on it. You string the bead and sew through it again. I just used one of my 15s and it'll slide right off when I'm done. We're gonna attach the top by sewing through the open hole and I'm gonna string four 15s and eight and a closed ring. I love using closed jump rings because the thread won't escape when you sew to it. And you can attach another jump ring if you want. I just attach my ear wire. So I have four 15s. And an eight. And a closed ring, which I'm going to hold because I don't want it to slide over my eight. I'm, instead, I'm going to sew back through just the size eight, like this. Get the tail out of the way. So this is what I have. You can see that I have the jump ring attached through the eight. Now I'm gonna string four more 15s. Let's get that over there. One, two, three, four. These little guys like to jump away from me on my bead mat. Now I'm gonna pull my stopper bead off. Now that I have those other beads strung, I'm gonna pull this off. And we're gonna carefully tie a knot can you see where the threads overlap here? I'm gonna tie a knot to bring that, the right side for me of the beads down. Right down there. Get, make sure you're doing it at the bottom of your beads. It's hard to do this from a distance. Come on. I'll undo this so I know you know what I'm talking about. There we go. I'm going to tie in a knot. I have hitch carefully so that it stays down at the end. I am all thumbs today, you guys. My hands are freezing. Believe it or not, my studio is an ice box. Okay, I'm going to make this easier on myself. Here we go. Ta-da! Okay. So I have that half hitch there to hold it in place. So I'm going to finish my knot just by bringing my thread through. And now you would weave the thread in following existing thread path again. I'm going to leave my tail for now. And I'm going to sew through the gem duo and up through the 415s and through the eight, you can see why having a size 12 needle is good. Through the closed jump ring, back through the eight, and down through the four 15s. There we go. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the tail, but again, for expedience sake, I'm just going to bring my thread zap down and get rid of those ends. You wanna make sure those ends aren't seen. And now all you have to do is attach the ear wire. I bend it open, these are pretty soft, so I can bend the hook open with my fingers and hook it on to that closed jump ring and squash it up to the stem again. That's it. 
that is the whole shebang for the insignia earrings which got their name when Leslie Pope saw my first one, which was the medals, and said, wow, that looks like something that a Star Trek person would wear. So I thought, hey, yeah. Here we go. So thanks for watching. This pattern should be available in the chat. Um trying to see on my laptop now. I don't know if Leslie has probably posted that by now. So you can see that it's for free in our I Love Beads section. Remember that you can find all of these mini gem duos, gem duos, kites, and seed beads findings and other quality beadsmith beads, tools, and supplies, like the Threads app, at your favorite bead reseller. So there you go, a nice spring project, lots of colors available. Hope you enjoy making your own insignia earrings. So we love beads. We love you. See ya.